mentioned this before, when there's more excitement about the environment than right now. I'm, I'm, I only got 15 minutes. I could spend a day talking about this, and uh, I'd rather do it outside because that's what I'm used to doing. But I'm going to have a PowerPoint here in a minute. Um, just to introduce myself, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a professor of biology, but I wear, like a lot of faculty here, a lot of hats. Uh, I am currently the director of the uh, Swanee Environmental Institute, which I'm going to spend most of my time talking. And I'm, I'm currently wearing that I'm very excited about is directing the Swanee Environmental Institute, which I said I'm going to spend some time talking about in my short 15 minutes. But let me just highlight some other real exciting things. Some of these things you're talking about. We've got four environmental studies majors right now, soon to add a, a fifth. Environmental Humanities, which is real, really exciting because that brings in the arts and brings in um, English, hopefully, and writing and other things that have not traditionally been associated with environmental studies here into the fold, making environmental studies truly uh, the most broadly uh, dispersed liberal arts major uh, within the school in, in its interdisciplinary sense. We have a new program director from New Mexico University whose uh, specialty is energy policy, and he's um, we're helping to build our, our policy side of the environmental studies program right now. Um, we have a number of things relating to student life. We have a new dorm, the greenhouse, where students can live in a sustainable way, using a, reusing an old house on campus, and uh, students are very excited about this alternative living op opportunity. We have these living learning centers now that are focused on providing freshmen with focused, um, academically oriented, programs within dorms to allow them in an extracurricular way to connect with faculty and peers that share similar interests. This is working extremely well. I'm sure you've heard about that from other folks. The Natural History Society is a program that um, uh, uh, created a few years back um, that allows students as a, a club to go out and explore the domain to hunt for salamanders and on Friday nights when other people may be uh, doing other things. They're out with their headlamps uh, and doing exciting things. Um, with the biodiversity and the geology of the, of the domain and surrounding environment. And this is the, probably the most, uh, the most popular uh, up and coming club on campus right now, which is very exciting to us ecology types. We have new facilities. You all saw the new facilities in Spencer, so we have new facilities in Snowden. Just wonderful, wonderful space. Lost Cove, what can I say? 3,000 more acres. Incredible. You know, we had 10, now we got 13. And it's just a tremendous uh, set of opportunities associated with that. And it's partly the lost code that led the university into some real deep strategic thinking about how we can, how we can capitalize on the environment as a strategic uh, educational asset for the school and build on the, the great things that we're already doing. And so this past year, we, <coughs> um, the Strategic Planning Committee passed an addendum to, to, to the strategic plan that uh, outlined a whole set of new things that the university can do to put us up there number one in the country <coughs> in, among our liberal arts peers in terms of environmental programs. Uh, one of these things is, is uh, set up a, a campus sustainability committee, hire a coordinator, but also to establish the Swami Environmental Institute, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Um, in a nutshell, uh, it was designed the institute was designed to, to think outside the box. How can we take what we currently have as I said and, and, and promote it in, in ways that we've never promoted before? And the, the key thing was to develop a way to bring high school kids here and help have them have an experience of the Swanee, um, uh, the, 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 the Swanee uh, the Environmental Studies program before they get here. So, bring them for, and so the idea was to have a two-week program where they could come in and get these kinds of opportunities and I'll talk about that. Um, that was sort of the, the key part of this, but, it, but the Institute spans a number of different other fronts as well, uh, engaging kids once they're here in ways that they haven't been able to engage before, providing funding and opportunities to allow them to do research, uh, take courses in the summer that are like our island ecology program that are field intensive, but it's focusing on the domain. Um, we were often asked when we were trying to raise money for Lost Cove, why do you need 3,000 more acres? You know, and, and so we were, we were challenged as a faculty to, to really think about exciting new ways that we could use this land base for its, and in, live in, in up to its real educational potential. Um, and so you know, on, on a number of different fronts, the Institute really is there to provide sort of a, uh, sort of a, a think tank, if you will, for promoting and, and moving the environmental agenda forward in ways that we haven't done. Next slide. And, and, and again, the, the key here is the domain. Is, is this really is among our peer sixty institutions, liberal arts institutions, we have you 
know, the top 60, I guess, US, US News World Report, we have the most land. And, but up until the strategic planning initiative, I think we would, we would we could arguably say we, um, per, on a per acre basis, did, did the least with that land uh, relative to other schools. Swarthmore had 200 acres, and they had enormous programs surrounding that 200 acres. We had uh, 13,000, and we really weren't capitalizing on it. So that was sort of the, the idea behind the Institute, was to promote that agenda. Um, the Institute, again, the flagship is the summer programs. We have these other two programs that I was already <coughs> involved with. This one is the Landscape Analysis Lab, which is our GIS Remote Sensing program, where we teach students how to, to uh, uh, do computer mapping, probably the most important environmental studies uh, tool in a toolkit coming out of college right now. Um, and, and that was an ongoing program that was umbrella under this, and as well as the Swanee Herbarium, which had one of our outreach programs focusing on <coughs> providing alumni and students opportunities to learn about the plants in the domain and, and tracking um, uh, uh, plant uh, diversity in our region. Uh, just some real, real quickly, Landscape Lab is doing two exciting programs right now. We have this, we've, we've been focusing up until now, as you probably know if you've been following news, but what the Landscape Lab has done, we've been worrying about the, the Cumberland Plateau as a whole and, and conservation issues surrounding the, the conversion of land to other uses like plantations and, and, and um, <coughs> residential uh, exurban sprawl, but more recently we've been focusing on the domain itself. And we have a tremendous set of, of computer databases now for the domain, extensive databases that students can use in all set, all different types of classes, and we're using as part of our summer opportunities. Next slide. Another, another thing that we're doing is we've taken all the old records of the institution going way, way back to the beginning of the, <coughs> the founding of the school, and we've digitized them, and we've made them spatially explicit, so you can go to any one spot in the domain, click on it, and figure out what happened there, what was cut, what was built there, what was done there, did people live there, has there been any research done there, and it's, it's a tremendous um, resource that is now available to our students in environmental studies. <coughs> um, summer programs, and this is again the flagship of the Institute. This summer we embarked on our pre-college experience, uh, and um, I'm going to talk about that in, in, in most extensively, but we also have as part of the mandate from the the Strategic Planning Committee and the Board of Regents to, to develop field courses for undergraduates, to enhance undergraduate research opportunities, and provide seminar series in the summer for students that are here on campus. Pre-college experience was kicked off this year. We had 28 students from, uh, oh gosh, I think 20 different states, from California to Florida to, to Connecticut. Um, these are kids that all will qualify for uh, participation, participation in Merit Weekend, so we were able to be selected. We had, we had um, um, uh, twice as many applicants as we had slots for. And uh, the idea behind this is again, it's a two week thing. They come and they do little modules with about seven different faculty representing as many different departments. And uh, they've all lived together in a dorm. Coming into the program, they're about well, maybe 30 40% interested in swine. From exit interviews, we know they're 80 to 90% interested in swine. We already have a couple of these kids who have said they're going to apply early decisions. So it works. You get them here, you show them the place. Engage them with our greatest asset, which I think is, it, I like to say, our faculty. And they get excited and they want to be here. And it's working. And this, this kind of niche marketing, this sort of cherry picking of kids from around the country uh, using this kind of strategy, it works. We're hoping to expand this kind of thing to other areas like theater and English. And, well, we have the Young Writers program, but, but you know, we, can, we can move that more in this direction of trying to track students specifically to matriculate here. And just, just, just some pictures from the summer. We have a fabulous set of kids, and it was really, really exciting to have these kids engage on, in the field with all these different faculty, doing all different kinds of things, measuring photosynthesis with Devin McGrath, or doing forestry work out in the, with uh, Ken Smith, or, or with Jerry Smith and John Willis going around looking at the history of the domain and land use, and studying in the plants in herbarium, and using our bike. We have now we have a fleet of bikes that we use in our classes. So most of my field classes now, we don't even use vans anymore. It's all bikes. We go everywhere with bikes. It's just, it's just a, uh, it's, it's not your grandfather's swanny anymore. <laughs>